Hey, y'all get in here. Get in here, get in here, get in here. Things are happening. We need to discuss. It's chilly. I'm under my blanket. I hope you all are either under your blankets or at your places of employment or higher learning institutions. And you got your water bottles and your earphones or ear buds or AirPods or whatever you're working with because we got to talk. So y'all come on in, hit the like button, please, and thank you. Put your like number in the chat. Don't forget your engagement button. And let's get into this foolishness, honey. Things is going down. Stuff I didn't see coming is happening. So y'all come mm -hmm. on in here. Please remember to like this video. Come on in. Let me greet who's here and let's get into this. Let's get into it. Okay. Miss Sparkle is here. Like number one. She said she figured the girl was going to quit. Well, we sure finna talk about it, honey. I, I don't blame her, but I, I have thoughts and we're going to see what the outlets are saying. It's on Bravo TV's official site. So, you know, it's official. Bianca the Beautiful is in the chat. Y'all, she said hit the like button on the way in. Get your water in your headphones, okay? Thank you so much, gorgeous, for reminding them to hit that like button. Happy to be happy is here. She's like number three. Malaya Lachelle is number six. All right. This my boo, Kia Coco Pop, is number five. Ooh, taking courses. All right, all right. We're proud of you. We love you. Nini Ashley is number 10. Hello, hello. Hey, beautiful. How are you? Happy Monday. Miss Nisi is here. I know that's right. We got Jen Bunny 1984. She's like number 11. I like it. I like it. East 32nd, where you been? It's so good to see you. Make sure you hit your like button and put your like number in the chat. Jen Bunny says she was waiting on this. I need this to make my day go by fast. <laughs> How you knew I was going to come say something? Hmm? How you knew? Hey, J Darkness. How you doing, boo? Thank you for being number 13. Good morning. Callie, good morning. You was waiting for me to talk about this. So y'all knew I was finna come run my mouth. How y'all knew? Who told you? Do I run my mouth that bad? Y'all knew, like, mouth almighty is coming to say something. Delicia Dismuke, thank you for being number 11. Diva Toot is number 15. Hey, now, my sis Lily is here. Hey, sissy, I love you. Christian. Key, my sweetheart is here. This is my Christian key, like number 15. All right, nephew is here, like number 17. E and the core junkie, my beautiful sister is number 19. Okay, you say you work from home, so you good. You're calling to 2 p.m. Let's go, girl. You off the chain. I like you. Vet, all the way from Birmingham, UK. Okay, she's like number 23. Jenny Patterson is in the house, number 19. Good morning, happy Monday to you, Queen of Hearts KS. Is number 12. Hey, boo. DV, you hit the button at the same time. Debbie Garcia is here. And Deborah Randall. So we legal. We got permits. We can talk housewives. She's 27. Debbie, Debbie Garcia is number 22. Nacho Twins Mama is in the house at 18. Thank you so much. KK. K to the K. K to the K. What's up? Darren Hood. Hey, cousin. Number 23. Thank you so much for being here. The beautiful and gorgeous Nisi Rose Argonne and Bombshell is in the house. Y'all better act like you know up there in Classy Canada. Miss Gardner's here, number 31. Duke Girl. Hey, boo. Thank you for being 24. KK is 38. Look, we, we getting into this thing. We getting into this thing. It's going down. It's going down. Cheryl Cooper's number 39. Nisi's 31. Anita Hayes, she's 33. D. Seratinas is in the house. So look, my sister's done tapped in. Y'all done tapped in, and we finna go ahead and talk about this foolishness, okay? Dana Cutler, Miss Steelers Nation is here. Miss Black and Yellow is 38. Cool gamer is always cool, always in the building. You can set your watch by cool gamer. Child, don't say hallelujah yet, because we ain't got confirmation, but we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. East 32nd, say, I'm here, auntie. Life been real rough. 
but I'm trying to let this pass. I saw you was going live and thought, let me go see you all and cheer me up. Well, I'm going to do my best to cheer you up. I know life has been rough on a whole lot of us, honey, but you keep your chin up, keep a smile on your face, and when all else fails, just sing a song. Because that's what I do. I be singing. That's what keep my spirits up, okay? Hey, Brian Patterson. What up, bruh? What up, cuz? Like number 41, Miss Kaiser so say is in the house. She off today. All right. She say, feel free to go live 10 times. Well, if you rolling with me, I just might. You never know. And thank you for being 43. You and Angela Davis hit the button at the same time. I appreciate it. Okay. Ray Ann. Hey, Bookie. She's number 45. All right. Hey, Dana. Dana Brown, 47. Okay. So look, I think I got everybody. So y'all know the rules. If I miss somebody, don't y'all miss them. Okay. As people come in, greet each other. If this is your first time on, on my porch, where well, we gossip over here. Make sure you put first time live or FTL in the chat so that we know so we can welcome you appropriately. Okay. Hey, poetic lyrics. Thank you for being number 49. Okay. So that's what time it is. Quick housekeeping. Make sure we keep all the comments and commentary about these reality TV personalities, celebrities, influencers, whoever that we're discussing. No personal attacks or comments against each other in the chat. If we, if, if we disagree, let's agree to disagree respectfully. Okay, tongue and teeth fall out. Can folks not supposed to? So let's make sure we stick by those rules over here. All right. And make sure we're greeting people, welcoming folks. Make sure everybody feels welcome. Nobody should just feel tolerated because that's never okay. All right. So let's get into this gossip. Hey, Trey Gaming Fish, like number 50. Child, this is how we start in the week. <laughs> this is how we start in the week. Hey, Monica McCall. Hey. I'm so glad to see you. Yolanda Franklin is in the house. All right. So look, Pris B, everybody sliding in just in time. Baby, you just in time. Y'all just in time to hit that like button too and put your like number in the chat. Okay. Who's like number 70? Who got it? All right. E Davis is here. Hey, sis, thank you for being number 53. You and Pris B and the first support of the entire day from Cali. Thank you for the super chat. Say, I hope that the Bravo execs, execs don't think that the audience want neck bone for season nine. We want Kiana. Watch out, Giselle. Mia is coming for her spot. I mean, if they need a new liar, Mia could take it. We got a third one coming in at like number 53, Callie Dream. Good morning. So look, y'all, this is what's on the wire for this morning. I told y'all this season of Negro 2024 has been explosive in this season of negro let's do a quick recap shall we because we, we we all know why we're gathered here today dearly beloved we know why we're gathered okay hey kiko good morning darling so um dig this this year started off with aliens at the mall in miami we had cat williams break the internet we have had what else then went on? We didn't have Kelly Price come in. We didn't had um Christian Keys come in and tell us that that men was trying to touch on him and stuff. We got Nickelodeon quiet on the set. We had Megan the Stallion drop Megan's Law and and Nick old Nika Nicki Mirage go on a seven day social media rant. We have had um what else then went on? Rick Ross baby mama has been a catastrophe online. We've had ex exposés left and right. We done had Diddy drug the court Cassie coming back for old sex worker fees from when she was doing sex work for him back in the day. He got new um, charges coming out. The man claimed that he grabbed his anus. We still don't know where the man left his anus for Diddy to grab it. We have, we have gone through some stuff in 2024. And now, 2024 is still 2024. Hey, Queena. It's still 2024. And something about this season of Negro, the 2024 season of Negro, I don't know what's going on, but it is indeed happening. It is going down. So what I, with my eyes seen this morning, my sister that be on the phone, she know I be up. So she texted me and sent me a picture, a screenshot that said, 
that um Candace Dilla Bassett done quit them people show. And you heard what I said, and you heard it right. Diva 2 said, and it's just March. It's just March. So please, please, if your wig has a chin strap, please make sure it's tightened. If your wig come with a chin strap, make sure that it is tightened and fastened properly. Because, baby, if the wig strap is, if your wig strap is not fastened properly, it may well fly off. This is just March. So according to the outlets, Candace, Candace, Dilla Bassett, Dorothy's daughter, Crystal's sister, uh, Chris' wife, done quit them people show. Hey, Tay, she done quit. She done quit. You understand? So now I'm going to read y'all what the articles is saying. This is from Bravo Television. I'm going to read the one from Bravo TV official site. Okay? This is what's going on. You better brace yourself. Better brace yourself. Because I know some of, like I said, some of them wigs come with chin straps. And make sure you tighten it. Tighten it. So, this is according to BravoTV.com. Candace Dillard Bassett is leaving the Real Housewives of Potomac. In parenthesis, see you later. Okay. The article reads: Here's what you may have missed. Um, we not let's not do that. Candace Dillard Bassett is leaving the Real Housewives of Potomac. Um, this is her statement. As I embark on a new chapter after six remarkable years with the Real Housewives of Potomac. I'm filled with gratitude for the enriching friendships, personal growth, and moments of introspection that have defined this journey, she said in her statement to People Magazine. With a whirlwind of new opportunities and responsibilities on my plate, I have decided to take a break from RHOP. As Candace herself said, she is taking time to focus on other projects and opportunities on RHOP season um, eight. Candace has balanced her busy tour schedule along with her acting ventures and her desire to have a baby with her husband, Chris Bassett. Though Candace is leaving RHOP, she noted in her statement that this is not a farewell, but a see you later. At the conclusion of her statement, Candace thanked her fans. Your unwavering support has been my guiding light, and I look forward to the exciting adventures that lie ahead, and more importantly, sharing them with all you sharing them all with you okay so that's what she said that's what's on bravo tv but apparently bravo had to get it from people because it looked like she gave the statement to people magazine so according to people magazine mm, mm, mm. let's see if there's anything different so she gave this to people magazine exclusively bravo had to get it secondhand from people magazine so I find that to be extremely interesting that she went to People Magazine first. Mm-hmm. Woo-woo-woo. Is there anything new? Okay, so this is what else People Magazine got that Bravo ain't got. People says it remains unclear whether any were able to mend fences at the reunion. The trailer, which People premiered Friday, shows Dillard Bassett doubling down her feelings toward the two, calling Dixon a loser and standing by insults that she thrown toward Bryant throughout the year. Executive producer and reunion host Andy Cohen has said that reconciliation was something he was hoping for. The flaw of this season is that there are women who aren't able to find any common ground with some of the other women. So there are all these pockets of women that won't even acknowledge each other, which is not a good, which is not a recipe, you know, good for good tv he noted on his radio show sirius xm andy cohen live earlier this month one of the hallmarks of one, earlier this month apparently he's saying one of the hallmarks of the housewives is finding a way to move forward and so that was kind of the directive the directive of the potomac reunion bravo famously doesn't comment on casting but a source close to production confirmed to people Dillard Bassett made the choice to leave the franchise on her own. Since she debuted on RHOP in 2018, Dillard Bassett has given the series some of the funniest one-liners 
with her quick wit and ruthless reads, earning her a spot on Cohen's list of shade assassins. But that mouth often got her in trouble with some of her cast co-stars, leading to dramatic clashes that sometimes left viewers polarized. She also is one of the few housewives in the history of the franchise to get married on the show. Her 2018 wedding to now husband Chris Bassett was featured in season four. Okay, so we ain't going into all her, her bio because that ain't necessary. Now, what I will tell you is we did indeed see her call Robert Dixon a loser. And quite frankly, I think it's accurate. I think it's accurate. She is a loser. I think that's kind of clear. Um, and she did double down on calling Giselle the devil because Giselle is evil as hell. And that's how the girl feel. All right. Monica say, so they saying it's getting clicky and mean girlish. Right. That's what they saying. But basically what it comes down to is what they want is people to run around kissing Giselle's tail when she don't want to talk to them. Because they didn't have a problem with her not speaking to people. They had a problem when folks decided they weren't going to speak either. And gee, okay, okay, working and listening, I love it. We miss you, girl. Yeah, she didn't. She did. She did not lie. She didn't lie, and she had every right to stick by it. Um, I believe personally that she made a decision to leave because they bringing people to jump her at events, and I feel like that's the best decision because obviously this is not a safe work environment. And they don't care about your safety, girl. Brass doll, thank you for being 73. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Remember, guys, if it's your first time, put FTL for first time live in the chat. Black and Honest Education says, I think Candace is pregnant. For the past few months, her clothes have been a little looser than usual. Ooh. You think there's a baby on the way, girl? Let me see what my sister on this phone saying. Oh, my sister says she think her mama told her it's time out. You in a situation where you picking up bottles to defend yourself, it's time to move around. That You know what? Mama Dot may have told her, like, this is not a good look. These people are extremely too ghetto. You might need to go for your safety. And if I was Dot, I probably would have told my child the same thing. Get away from those hood boogers. Because we all know that Giselle and Robert are indeed hood boogers. We saw them um, at Monique's cabin being very very ignorant oh i got a cash app from leah aries she sent me the flower thank you so much that's so sweet i wish i knew how to um pull it up on the screen but i really don't i really don't and my sister's saying she hope wendy finds something else to do too um that would be great if we could get those ladies who have too much class to be there even karen just get them away from those those ghetto chicks um sasha t said i really don't blame her she can have a baby in peace yeah i would not want her trying if she's pregnant i would not want candace to be pregnant on that show especially considering that they are willing hey mr james happy happy monday good morning yeah because she was entertaining but i would not want to see her on that show pregnant because these women we are seeing they were comfortable conspiring and plotting to bring someone to physically attack her bringing those girls there that are friends with ashley to jump her because they were there to jump that girl the one that was that was looking like lord goro with the hair pulled back in the ponytail deborah she was there to with the frontal attack and then they had that sydney chick waiting in the wings to help fight too and she proved it because when um when kiana was having to give that tramp that work for hitting her in the face with a glass. Sydney reached behind her, grabbed the back of her head and pulled her to the floor, slung her to the floor. Malaya says she never knows how to play her cards right. She should not have left. If she pregnant, she should have. But even if she's not pregnant, I'll, I, I, don't think it's, I don't think it's a bad move. You think it's a bad move, Malaya? Hey, Quiet Storm 87. Our new mom, thank you for being 73. Poetic lyrics say loser sounds about right for Robert and does. And does. But I do I don't I don't know whether I think it was just, oh, I'm busy, I'm gonna take a step back. I think she made a decision to move out of the way. 
Pris B says exactly. Hey, D Marie. Yep, good for her. Um, yeah, Giselle is sinking RHOP. I don't blame Candace for refusing to kiss her lumpy narcissistic tail. Yeah, I wouldn't either. I wouldn't either. No way. Brian Patterson say Robert Robin been a loser. You paid to show your life and never did. And when it comes when it came to that marriage, yeah, never. Absolutely never. Um, Diva 2 said exactly. They weren't looking out for her best interest. I feel like that girl is in danger. And I think that it absolutely has something to do with these people being willing to bring people to jump her and physically attack her while she's filming a show. My sister says we need to normalize leaving. You don't always have to stay and fight. Leave sometimes. Candace has plenty of money and opportunities. That is that is awesome and completely true. That is 100% true. Okay? Yvette said there wasn't no pockets of women refusing to get along. It was Giselle and Nantucket. That's true. Mm-hmm. Brass Doll say, I'm glad she left for her own safety. I'm scared for Wendy now. I'm scared for them if they run up on Wendy. Don't, don't y'all let the professor fool y'all because I remember very clearly when Giselle and Robert were sitting up there lying on Eddie. Um, Wendy got out of character. Wendy had slid to the edge of that sofa. Wendy had done eased up. She was about to take off on Giselle. So don't, please do not let Wendy fool y'all. Wendy will fight. Wendy be trying to be classy. And, and kudos to her for trying to be classy, but I see it in you. You know, I know a brawler when I see one. That's all I'm saying. You're a brawler, professor. Nothing against you, though. I think it's great. You know, I myself have engaged in a brawler, too, so I understand. But this, is, she's a brawler. Yolanda say Robin needs to go long overdue with her history of aggressive behavior toward the women. Absolutely. Absolutely, freaking lutely Lady T, thank you for being 77. Randa Diva, my sis is here. Hey, boo. I'm glad you hopped in. Um, Brad's doll says, wait, wait, what well, I want it. Okay, I was about to say StreamYard is acting ignorant today. Um, Brad's doll say Andy should why well, won't it stay up? Do it. Andy should have named Giselle in his statement about ladies who ignore the women. He's not going to do that because she has been their henchman. So you got to look at it like this, right? This is the way you got to look at that. Look at it from this angle. You don't have to, but look at it from this angle. Hey, M. Guerrero, thank you for being 79. A lot of, and I'm not taking up for Giselle because y'all know I don't like her either. Okay. She's not very likable, but let's be fair and realistic. Okay. Hazeline. A lot of the reason why Giselle is so unlikable is because she's someone that's willing to do what production asks her to do. Period. So think about that. A lot of the nastiness, a lot of the antics, a lot of the foolishness that Giselle Bryant does and gets away with is because those are the things that production is asking her to do. She's a lot like Kenya Moore in that regard. Like they, they were willing to just do whatever production asked. Hey, prognosis. So that has a lot to do with why Andy Cohen is never really going to just call Giselle out. I know y'all want to see him call her out. I'm with it. I understand. Like I'm on your side, but I think we have to be okay with the fact that that's not going to happen because a lot of her behavior has been encouraged by production and is aware of it. That's why she's always been in that front seat, even though she offers absolutely nothing. That's why. So let's be clear. Like they're not going to check her on stuff that they, 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 they are the ones who created that monster, so to speak. Hey, he, he, L, E, L. Michael Morris says, I thought Bravo was on the right track getting rid of Marlo, Sanya, and Anne Marie. This ain't it. If Giselle and Robin get away with avoiding doing work with Candace and Wendy and still get the checks. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. And unpopular opinion, 
I didn't feel like Marlo should go anywhere. Y'all felt like Marlo should go somewhere. I didn't feel like Marlo needed to go anywhere. I didn't. Mm -mm. Reason number one through 10, y'all didn't have no authentic mouthpieces on that show. Not one. Not one. Mm -mm. And part of the biggest thing that was going on with Marlo was the fact that they wanted to ice her out. And it wasn't possible because Sheree was going along with it. I didn't have a problem with Marlo being on that show. I didn't. I may not care for some things she's done personally, but as far as her on that show, it never bothered me. It never bothered me. The idea of trying to ice somebody out because their mouth is worse than yours is bull crap. It, it, never, it never gave me. It never gave. And I never cared one bit about her insulting Kenya or Candy. Never cared. Because these are the same people who, who have created alliances, iced other cast members out, told heinous lies on people. Like, they've done some nasty stuff. So, to be honest, I never had a problem with Marlo. I personally don't feel like that's one that Bravo got right at all. I don't know Anne Marie. And when it came to Sanya Richards Ross, I feel as though Sanya, while she had a beautiful family dynamic, it just wasn't entertaining. I, I put Sanya Richards Ross in the same category as Monique from Potomac. What was her last name? Samuels. I put them in the same category because Monique had a beautiful family. It was a great dynamic. It was beautiful, but it just was not entertaining. Monique had moments here and there, but she wasn't entertaining. She was boring. She was beautiful and boring. And I, I looked at Sonya the same way. You look great. Your family is beautiful. Your husband is attractive. Your children are, are cute. Your parents are, you know, they're cute. Your mama aggravating, but your parents cute to look at and all that good stuff. But it just was not entertaining. It, it just wasn't entertaining. Um, but that's just what that is. So Candace has left the building. She's saying, you know, she'll see him later. She could, will come back after she's had a baby or whenever she could choose not to come back at all. She might decide to come back when, you know, they get rid of some of the trash. Like, I don't know what her strategy is, but I want to go on record as saying, I do believe it's got something to do with them bringing people to attack her. I'm going to say that. I believe it's got definitely has something to do with that. And to be honest, I wouldn't come back either because you're not going to get me no jail time bringing people to jump me. You're not doing that. Yvette says, I like Marlo. She had tried too hard to please production once she had her peach. However, I think she would have calmed if they brought her back. But Yvette, I told y'all Marlo was the henchman and I was proved right. It was some stuff that was said during that reunion and even the way she was treated during that reunion, let me know. Bravo and the production sent her after those people. Well, I don't think she was trying too hard. I think she was doing the job. And we got to remember when people um, are the ones who are willing to obey production and do what, what production asked them to do to kind of overproduce a show, we usually don't end up liking those people. Prognosis says she wanted... To G, she wanted the GEB to accept her and ended up with egg on her face. Oh, talking about Candace or Monique or who? Because both of them did. Can we be honest? They both did. They were both played by Team Yellow. Michael said Marlo was better as a friend, in my opinion. What was the difference? I miss the days when Housewives were auditioned for the show. Nene Wig and Sheree did that enough with getting fans on the show and making it drag. I mean, but Nene didn't audition. Nene was there from the beginning and casted most of that show. Pris B say she re didn't really do well on her other show. Talking about Monique. Monique is boring. Monique is beautiful and boring. <laughs> Jen Bunny says, I agree. They need to back to audition to audition segments. Mm -hmm. They should do something. So I choose to deal with Monique's family. Family life over sham storylines with Giselle and Rob. Yes, like, don't get me wrong. Like I said, I love Monique Samuels. I loved her on the show. I loved every time that she gave it to him. 
I enjoyed seeing her family. Like her children are beautiful. Her homes were beautiful. But it's just, I'm sorry, it wasn't entertaining. It wasn't entertaining. I would say so, but I, I, I wish I could say otherwise, but it wasn't. She was beautiful, lovely, great mama, cute as she could be. Definitely was on her side with that Candace situation, but she just wasn't entertaining. Usually, like just overall, she wasn't. Sasha T says, since when does production wrap at 9.50? They usually go till 11 or 1 a.m. It was definitely a setup. Oh, yes, it was, Sasha. It was a, it was a whole setup. Prognosis met Monique. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, it's just crazy. Oh, okay. You meant that they use Marlo to her detriment. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, so that's what's going on with Candace. You know, we got off on a little bit of a sidebar. Um, but we got to talk about this Robin Dixon rumor. Now I'm going to tell you something. When it was first said, it was said by the Jasmine brand. Now, I didn't take that and run with it because, you know, we just saw Jasmine brand was accused of having fraudulent exclusives. And we got to talk about that, too. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's gotten a little interesting. And I'm going to tell you why it's interesting and why there may be this one may have teeth, y'all. This one may have teeth. It may well have teeth. Um, the Jasmine brand reported it first. And again, I don't know how legit this is, but that's what's being said. Where is it? Here we go. So they posted this, I want to say, two hours ago. Now, since that time, they're actually live now. I wonder what they live talking about. I'm not going to go in. But um, they posted this two hours ago. Um, the Neighborhood Talk picked it up like 48 minutes ago, and people are reposting it from the Neighborhood Talk. But I'm just being clear where this came from. The Jasmine brand posted it as an, ex as an exclusive two hours ago. Now, I don't know if it's true, but I think there may be teeth to it. They're saying the Jasmine brand exclusively reports Robin Dixon will allegedly not be returning for the upcoming season. Network sources tell us that production is shaking up the cast, trying to revive the series. Okay. Now, I, I didn't, like I said, they just got accused of not of having fraudulent exclusives about the SWV and escape thing. Now we're seeing that maybe they didn't have it wrong. Maybe they had it right. It's given that Lily actually lied or at least tried to miss to mislead the public intentionally. And I heard that um, Candy Burris um, did the same thing, said it wasn't true. And now we're seeing that there may be something to that. So it's quite possible that the Jasmine brand is not getting fraudulent exclusives. Maybe their exclusives are indeed legit. But this is where I said, I think there may be something to it. There may be teeth. Don't know if it is, but it may be. He, he, L, E, L said, I don't believe the Robin Dixon thing yet. This is her main income. I don't think she would quit. They're not saying she quit. They're saying that she got fired. This is what these people are alleging and asserting. They're saying they believe that Robin was fired. Fired. Not quit. There's a difference. But the reason why I say there may be teeth. Let's hang on and wait, y'all. I'm not saying jump on the train. I know how people can get when we don't like people. Everybody gets excited and they run with a story. Do not do that because this may be a fake out. But there may be teeth because someone post, um, posted in the comment section and they made a comment and they tagged Carlos King. And they said, where is at Carlos King in his live? I need it now. Laughing face emoji. People tag him all the time. 
He doesn't respond because how the hell can he respond to everybody who tags him? But he responded and said tonight at 7 Eastern Standard Time. So I feel like one, if there's something to it, he's going to know. If he hadn't heard anything when this rumor first came out two hours ago, I'm sure he has by now. And what I'm absolutely certain of is that by the time he goes live tonight at 7 Eastern time, 6 Central, that whether he says it or not, he's going to say it. You, you know what I'm saying? Because we know how Carlos King is. We know how, how he is. He's one of those people, if he doesn't want to say it, his face is going to tell it. And if he wants to say it, he's just going to say it. So we just have to watch and, and, and pay attention and see what's going on. Anderson Cooper, welcome. Is this your first time? So I honestly would hate to see Robin on, hate to lose Robin on this show. She gets a lot of slack for being Giselle's friend. But Robin is decent in my opinion. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Y'all welcome Anderson Cooper. Nice picture. That's one way to that's one that's one take on it. Um, if I'm being honest, I feel like she has to be fired. I said that before. Not even because I think she's the worst person on the planet. I don't like her. Um, she's again, she's not likable. However, I feel as though she has to be fired. I feel as though it's a season late for her to be fired. I think she has to be. Um, okay, thank you, Anita. Um, because of the way Bravo handled Kenya. And I keep bringing that up because it is it's 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 pertinent, it's relevant. Kenya Moore kept part of her life away from this show, from RHOA. They fired her. That black woman was fired. Hey, Miriam Sanfleur. And so Robert Dixon intentionally withheld information. And then told her story behind a paywall. Kenya Moore did not do anything that was that calculated or heinous. She did not participate in lying on other cast members' husbands in order to cover her tracks. Kenya didn't do any of these things and she was fired. And so I said from last season and I have to maintain because I believe right is right. And I don't like Kenya Moore either. Y'all know I can't stand her. She lied too much. But right is right. Wrong is wrong. You fired that black woman for doing less than that non-black woman did. So I feel as though Robin has to be fired. At least for a season. If you want to bring her back after that, no problem. But if you're not going to fire her, I've said then, I maintain now, then you owe Kenya Moore back pay with interest for the season that she did not work because you fired her for doing less. Period. Because quite frankly, if you ask me, I would not have cared if you fired Giselle and kept her or if you fired her and kept Giselle. My only thought on that was always that one of them needs to go. One of them need to go. I didn't care which one it was. Right. I'm not a Kenya fan. Never liked her. never liked her that type you know that brand of ghetto is not my kind I, that's not my type of ghetto um but right is right wrong is wrong hands down right is right wrong is wrong no ma'am she she has to be fired jen bunny says agree giselle and rob should have been fired a long time ago time ago sorry they are not good reality tv personalities they're really not at all, but if they just want to keep one, that's fine. Darren said, I agree, Shanitra. I would like to see how Giselle interact differently without Robin. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think either way, we're going to get a bit of a show. Um, Giselle without Robert, 
is going to have to, you know, either stick up for herself or sit over there and look like a mouse. Um, and if she doesn't have a henchman, I think she's going to be, be forced to operate completely differently. Um, Robert, without Giselle, would have, I think, just without Giselle, she's normally going to go along with the flow and be fun or try to be fun. So if, for me, either way, it was a win-win. It's, it's going to be entertaining to watch Giselle flop around like a fish out of water without a henchman, I think. Michael Morris says, I understand you don't roll with Kenya. I was in that boat in her earlier seasons, but she put the, the work for the show. She put in the work for the show when the show was in its prime. Robin gives us a paywall to look for a storyline. But that's what I'm saying. I don't like her. Um, I understand that a lot of, like, like I just said, maybe minutes ago, the people who do what production asked them to do are often not likable because production gets them to do things that are provocative. Okay. Um, I don't know if production asked her to be a liar, but that's, you know, that's just one of her things. Um, Kelly says not a Kenya fan either, but she brought more to RHOA than Robin brings to Potomac. But we had to ask ourselves like, what is the deal? Bravo. What's the deal? Bravo. NBC universal. Why is it that a black woman can come to work and, and con continuously consecutively clock in and this non-black woman cannot put in the work cannot show up can hide stories and then tell it behind a paywall and keep her job that's not okay and says i agree shanitra i've always said that too they owe my lady her her back pay because she didn't do near the damage the gebs have done right did not did not not even close so i think that's a bit of a problem Deborah says, I think Bravo gave Robin a chance to bring it. And that meant one at the reunion from what we've seen, he's not there. That's true. Say, but Ashley is really Giselle Henchman, not Robin. You, you can look at it that way. Just, um, Ashley does do a lot of the dirty work. Robin is more like security. Anybody that confronts Giselle when it's time for her to speak up for herself, Robert stands up and swells up like a puffer fish and starts flailing her arms around like she's trying to frighten a grizzly bear. So, you know, maybe henchman is the wrong word. Maybe security, bouncer, maybe lap dog is a better one. You right. Yes, girl, Candace really quit. She gone. Her gone. Malaya says she'll find a new one. Those girls are desperate to be next to her and it's sad. But now let's look at what we have. Unless, unless they get somebody new, to come in there that wants to be the lap dog even at that nobody over the years has been as dedicated as big rob nobody's been as dedicated as big rob ain't nobody you know well jumping around jumping in stuff barking like a big man and acting like a bull in a china shop nobody else is doing that ds hey boo you listening and driving don't be typing don't be, be typing do talk to text child yep colorism hey black Said, right, stand on business. Don't like her. Right. You know, but I think we have to be honest. Like, even if you don't care for someone's antics or personality, we still have to be fair about what's going on. Thank you for being 113. Yeah, Nick is a complete, y'all be calling Giselle. Nick, it takes me out. She is a complete punk without Robert and Ashley. Even with Ashley, she's a punk because um, Ashley ain't going to, you know, act, get masculine and run up in nobody's face robert will um michael says that tells you what robin gives us and giselle definitely forces production to keep robin for years on the show and probably threaten to leave the show if they fire robin well we know she ain't leaving now because she's got that baby in school she's got two more at home and she got to pay for the she shed in the woods okay Oh, yeah. Well, people who engage in colorism will always tell you that it doesn't exist. It's kind of like racism. That's kind of how that works. Hey, Miss Thelma. Hey, Rochelle. Thank you for being 114. Yes, Ashley absolutely needs to go. Um, after what we saw last night and last Sunday, Ashley absolutely brought people there to physically attack Candace Dillard Bassett. So, no, she does not need to be there because her judgment is way off. She thinks that it is okay and acceptable to bring people to do physical harm 
to her co-workers. Um, Poetic Lyric says, well, if it turns out to be true, I won't be sad to see her go. I don't think many of us will. I don't think many of us will. Hey, Brown Style. I'm so glad you're here. Coco, thank you for being 117. Anderson says, not Big Rob. Yes, Big Rob. What a formidable gentleman she is. Chris B said, I didn't agree with some of Kenya's antics, but she's more polarizing. The GEB's mediocre and messy selves. Yes, she clocked in. That's what I'm saying. I don't like Kenya for anything. I mean anything. I wouldn't vote for her to be a ditch digger. I don't like her for nothing. But we got to be honest over here. She has consistently and consecutively, every year she has been on RHO8, clocked in. Sans last season. Last season, I don't know what that was, but she has truly clocked in and worked. And I feel like if she had done what Robert did, she wouldn't, they would have never brought her back. They fired her for a season for doing less and brought her back. But had she done the things that Robert Dixon has done, she would, they would have never brought her back. She still wouldn't have a job. She still wouldn't. That's why Bravo is never going to beat the colorism and racism charges. They're never going to beat them. The fact that Phaedra Parks repeated a rumor and it was branded a liar and we all got to run around and pretend like, Oh, Phaedra lied, Phaedra lied when she clearly said, I was told that and I repeated it. And we got Mia Thornton that lies through her teeth, left, right, center, sideways, backwards, front ways, inside out. And it's a joke and it's funny and oh, it's so cute. Mia be lying. That's not cute. A black woman repeats a rumor that people don't like. She's a liar. Give her a scarlet letter. A non-black woman, a large Hispanic gentleman, tells filthy lies, left, right, center, damaging lies on people. And it's funny. It's cute. Mia be lying. And we know who started that, Carlos King, but we also know that he's somebody who's very um, misogynoir. He's very anti-black woman. So, of course, he's okay with this non-black biracial woman telling a pack of lies. That's cute. But when it comes to Phaedra repeating a rumor... Scarlet letter, burner at the stake, tar and feathers, draw and quarter, you know, put her in the Iron Maiden. Hey, damn rocks. Zeline said they gave Robin a chance, but they shouldn't have. Did they, did they give Kenya more a chance? That's my question. I'm not against giving people chances, but I am against inequitable treatment. There was no give Kenya more a chance. Was there? So if the sister didn't get a chance, that non-sister shouldn't have got a chance either. Period. I don't know. I don't know. Zeline said, yep, college is expensive and the twins will be going soon. Right. Giselle is not going to jeopardize her check for Big Rob. It's not happening. It's not. It's not going down. Yeah, Giselle was definitely pulling back from her this season. And I feel that, to me that that gives that Giselle knows something or has heard something concerning Robin. That's the other reason why I feel as though this rumor may have some teeth to it. Ashley ain't never been innocent. Never been innocent. By the time you bringing people to jump your coworkers, you innocent has nothing to do with your character at that point. Yeah, I think they were trying to, you know, jump that girl. That was definitely, they were trying to orchestrate a jump. And say Robert stands up for Jizzy better than she does herself. She's always big and bad when it comes to capping for, for Jizzy. But when it comes, but when Karen, Candace, or Wendy drags her, she have weak comebacks or she leaves. Well, when they, you know, when anyone confronts Robin of Robert about herself, that's when she stands up and waves her arms. Robert, you told a lie. Robert's lying. Robert's lying. That's what she does. Robert, you didn't take a bath today. Robert didn't take a bath today. Robert didn't take a bath today. That's what she does. But when it comes to Giselle, oh, she's she's a Brahma bull. She's a Brahma bull. 
she is snorting and and scrape and, and kicking up dust and scraping the ground and you know charging but when it's herself she just repeats whatever you said to her back and screams and waves her arms now that's what she does she just did it on a couple of episodes ago over at big reese's house just did it just did it hey ali all right ali says happy monday kenya says she wasn't clocked in because the girls weren't worth it she couldn't deal with the rehearsed reads that was a cop out kenya's full of crap kenya gives rehearsed reads so why the hell didn't she rehearse some to go back and forth with the girls that were there? That was a cop out. Miss Snores gave y'all some lies and some of y'all fell for it. Brett's doll says, I noticed Giselle distancing herself from Robin. She does want to be Karen's friend. Remember when Giselle and Sharice were making fun of Robin? Yeah. I mean, I don't put it past it. I don't think she really wants to be Karen's friend, though. I think she wants to attach herself to Karen because she feels... I, I, I think that Giselle might have known or felt that the writing was on the wall toward Robin. That's what I think. Um, Angel Gamer says, hey, thank you for being 123. Said that Candace is leaving, but I understand. Oh, yeah. Because good or bad, Candace Dillard Bassett is good TV. She gets on my nerves from time to time, but she's entertaining. Ian said, nope, they fired Kenya off, off the bat. So fire Robin or back pay for Kenya. That, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. They did not give her a chance, and that's not okay with me. Like, it's fine if you don't want to give her a chance, but everybody should get the same treatment across the board. Ali said, I think and hope Candace is pregnant. She doesn't need the stress of the show if she's pregnant. Yeah, if she is, I would hope that. I would truly hope that um, that that would be a great reason for her not to opt to come back if people are trying to physically attack her because she absolutely cannot be attacked while pregnant. That's out of the question. Hey, Iman. Okay. Malaya says, I see why Juan be disgusted by her. I get it, but I have a problem with him with Juan telling Robert that she made his skin crawl that is that's gonna bother me for a very long time that's gonna bother like I, I don't want to see his face like after that happened I don't want to see his face the fact that he said that to that lady let me tell you something I joke about Robin Dixon I call her big Robert because she acts like a man and quite frankly she gives me Jake from State Farm with a splash of Ric Flair the nature boy but that's still a woman that he chose at one point to marry, to lay down and have children with, who he is now living in her home and not working, eating her food, laying on her sheets, using her toilet paper. And she's calling him and he's aware that she's filming. She's on national, should dare I say, international television and telling her that she makes his skin crawl. That is... That goes beyond being irritated or annoyed with someone. That goes beyond a simple insult. That goes to the level of degrading. And I'm, I don't know, it makes me uncomfortable that any man is that comfortable degrading a woman, like just absolutely demeaning. To, to do that to her, knowing that their camera's rolling, I, that, that, I don't, I don't know y'all that's never going to be okay with me. That made me feel some type of way. Those of you who were watching me in real time, do the review. I didn't even hear it when it first happened. Y'all told me in the chat and I went back and listened. And if y'all could have seen the look on my face, when I heard him say that, that finished me. Like I have no understanding for him at all. Michael Moore says, I'm surprised Robert didn't stop the waving her arms nonsense after the umbrella incident with Monique and Monique dragging Candace after trying to invade her personal space. Um, she's not going to stop because, you know, she's Robert. DM Rock said they released the details about Karen's DUI. Okay. Maybe we'll do a live and we'll talk about it another time. Queena says, I just recently started watching the show. 
What is her race? Not black. 60% Caucasian. 60%. And a very small percentage of Negro is in there. Like It looks like just a little bit ran past her. M. Guerrero says, and because people like Karen as well, and because people like Karen as well, so Giselle would want to be attached to that. Absolutely. I think, but I do feel like there's a, a certain level of irritation on Giselle's end because I think that she doesn't really understand why people, a lot of people have an affinity for Karen. Karen is one of those fan favorites. People just like Karen. Karen is fun. She's funny. Even when she be lying, she be funny. You know, and if you call her on it, she'll she'll cop to it. Like, yeah, well, <laughs> and and she's she's light. I think that's the thing. She's very light. She's not heavy. So I think that's why she's it's easier to like Karen than it is Giselle. Giselle gets heavy and dark with the lies and the nastiness. Um, and say, okay, I don't know what that word is. Because I think Jizzy also knows Ashley may not be back either. She got a link with a fan favorite, which is Karen. Okay. Okay. I know we. that's what we're talking about, Randall, right now. Yeah, Nisi, I'm with you. Juan can't come back from that comment. Never. Juan, Juan Dixon can never come back. From saying that to that girl, knowing a camera was rolling, it's not okay that he that he would talk to her like that. Period. Please um, understand that I'm not saying like, oh, if he insults her in private, that's great, or if he degrades her in private or humiliates her in private, that's great. It's not, but the fact that he didn't even care about doing it in front of an audience that made me so uncomfortable. Like it didn't make me like Robert, but it sure as hell made me feel bad. Like it made me really pity her in that moment. Um, it also made me want to pop her on the back of her behind. Like, girl, why are you letting this man talk to you like that? Are you crazy? Like, are you insane? Have you been eating dog food? Why are you letting this man talk to you like that? Why? Mm-mm. I didn't like it. I just, I didn't. He, he, L, E, L said, it's not even the worst he said. After all, he's the one who let us know that the girl was laying in bed and not bathing. So, Randa says, sorry, I stepped away. I missed the topic in my bed. <laughs> no, you fine, sis. Oh, continued. Okay. You supposed to put the N and then TD, C and TD. That's why I know what that was. Say my first part, Giselle needs an ally since Robin is gone and she would prefer it to be a yellow one. But it has to be Karen because she's the fan fave. She feels this may secure her job. You know what? She's been a part of a duo. She's trying to make Karen the second half of her duo while she's her friend of me at the same time. That would make sense because, you know, we saw the Wendy's commercial with Giselle and Karen. And let's I'm not going to say a lot about that Wendy's commercial. I'm going to say this. It didn't look good on Karen or Giselle. The lighting was unforgiving. The camera work was unforgiving. I saw every line, every wrinkle, every creping of the skin. I was like, whew. But at least Karen is 60. Giselle, you're seven years younger, dear. Why do you look like that? You're only 53. Why do you look like that, Giselle? Why are there so many lines in your face? It was giving bruised banana real strong. A strong bruised banana. A deep bruised banana. Trying to get these comments. M. Guerrero says, I agree with you on that, Shanitra, because I know someone like that, and they're really like Giselle, and they also feel privileged. I also learn a lot from this show, 
as well and talking with you and the i just have to get the rest i have to get the rest y'all the comments i'm trying to get y'all's comments please forgive me if i miss something i'm not trying to miss y'all's comments okay got it you can see mia trying to be that i could see it but giselle is not gonna do that because she 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 can't count on it say so now they know who should have been on that commercial i'm just saying Yep, she does need Karen. I agree. There, there's a Wendy's commercial about beef, like saying they have beef, but they're supposed to be saying something nice about each other. And it was it was really funny. They did a Wendy's commercial. This is like just happened. Anderson Cooper says Giselle and Karen have always been a duo. They've always been Kim and Nene to me. Really? Let me think about that. Were Kim and Nene a duo? Because I see the parallel in the relationship. Like they were friends, then they're frenemies. And sometimes they get along, sometimes they don't. But were they ever a duo? Like they've been around each other, they've hung out together. I can see how they play off each other and one doesn't quite work without the other one, maybe kind of, sort of, somehow. But she was actually a duo with Robert. But I, I kind of get what you're saying, though. You just made me think, girl. Gave me a Charlie horse in the back of my brain. I caught that. Yeah. Okay. Poetic lyrics say, if he's so nasty to Robert when the camera is on, how much more verbally abusive is he when they're off? That's what I thought about, too. It was like, whoa. That was an ugly look into what goes on in that house. Say Karen and Giselle are friend are frenemies who won't go below the belt. Oh no, no, boo. Uh-uh. I can't agree with that one because Giselle has gone below the belt. Giselle has talked about Uncle Ray's private parts, wore t-shirts about Texas. Oh, she absolutely goes below the belt. Karen don't really go below the belt that much, but she has too. Cause she told her about that flamethrower between her legs. Remember that? And the broke down hole at Hampton University. So they'll go below the belt. You know, they try to do it in a certain type of way. But they will go below the belt. 53. Looking like my grandma. Mm-hmm. Hey, Bama Gail. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Is this your first time being live with us? If so, welcome. Y'all welcome um, Bama Gail to the chat. Hey, Pink Rosa, long time, gorgeous, long time. Randa says that's the same Anderson Cooper who publicly said Nene. No, wait. No, 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 no. This ain't white Anderson Cooper. I like Anderson Cooper. That's Gloria Vanderbilt's son. If, if that Anderson Cooper was in here, I'd have been asking for an interview. I'd have been asking for an autograph. I'd have asked him for a piece of um memorabilia from his mama. That ain't, mm -mm. I don't care if Anderson Cooper don't talk to Nene no more. I don't care. Nene don't even stay, um fall out with her own enemies and stay out. She let them people drag her for filth and she take them back in so they could drag her some more. I ain't, I'm never falling out with Anderson Cooper behind Lanethia Monique Leakes. I love Nene, but mm mm. Girl, if that was the Anderson Cooper in my chat, huh, can I get a, anything from your mama? Anything, a teacup, a handkerchief, anything, a brooch, a bottle of fingernail polish, something. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Anderson say, no, boo, I'm black. I know. Listen, I wish, like, don't don't get me wrong. I'm happy to have you here. And I love that you're here. And I hope you come back again because I dig your energy. You made me flex my brain. And I like that. But if it was the real Anderson Cooper, I'd have acted a fool in here. What? Hmm. Jim Bunny said, my mom will be 57 next month and looks younger than Giselle. I know people that are 65 that look younger than Giselle. Send disfigures. 
Nisa said the Gloria Vanderbilt perfume. Girl, you remember that? I remember that. All us ladies of a certain age, we remember having the Gloria Vanderbilt for show. Sure. For show. Sure. So I like Anderson Cooper. I'm not like, I'm not, you know, I don't know that much about him to be crazy about him, but I loved his mama. So if he'd have been in my chat, I'd have been like, listen, friend, friend. Can I get any memorabilia from your mama? See, May say when I visited Newport, Rhode Island years ago, I toured Vanderbilt summer home, still stunning. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Randa said, I like Anderson Silver Fox Cooper too. In fact, I often run into him on my way to New York to lunch in New York City. Always very pleasant. I couldn't run into him. He'll be like, get this ignorant country lady away from me. Cause I would have asked him, can I have anything? You got a picture of your mom and your phone. Let me take a picture of your screen. That would have been me. Cause I love glow. Yeah. Glow. <laughs> Darnell Jenkins say Candace don't really need that. Candace got the show. Hush on all got to show hush on all black. She got her music career and her mom's rich and her daddy. Don't forget her daddy got bread too. Mm-hmm. That's not always true, Katrina. The less melanin in your body, more wrinkles. You, mm -mm. Yeah, that's not always true. Because I know quite a few of our elders who were red or as we say, high yellow, and they don't look like that. Seeing this figures. LaPrice, you remember them jeans? Because I had some too. Because I had some of the Gloria Vanderbilt jeans too. With the swirl on the pocket in the back, you dip down like this, and then they go back up the other way. Mm -hmm. I had some. Hey, Tiger Eye Oracle. Say Giselle is poison to RHOP. I don't know why Bravo don't see it. Because she's willing to do their dirty work. And they're going to hold her there to, until they Kenya more her. Because you saw what they did to Kenya. Once they got tired of her and they used her up and didn't want to pay her. They sent a henchman after her. They hired Marlo and sent Marlo after her. That's what they did. And, and when she tried to pivot from being the villain that they had wanted her to be all those years, they wouldn't even show that girl salon. So you know how Bravo is. They use you up. They pump and dump. Once they use you up, they throw you out. So now let's talk about this real quick because I'm trying not to hold y'all too long because it's the middle of the day. Well, remember... When the Jasmine brand, the same people who put this story out about Robert Dixon, put out the story that SWB and Escape were coming back for a second season. Hey, All Things Dream. I'm glad you caught alive. How are you? So they put out the story that SWB and Escape were coming back for a second season. When I first saw the news, I was obviously not happy because the first season was so dry and they spent the whole, whole first season really picking on the big spot, the big Scott sister. I almost call her the big spot sister, the big Scott sister, the little big one and the big, big one were feuding. And then candy and tiny got in on it. So it was all of them picking on the big one and the little big one was their friend, but the big, big one wasn't their friend. And then the last part of the season was them trying to pretend they were a bigger group than SWV, trying to rewrite history. So I'm like, okay, we got to do another season of this. Well, Lily Lewis, y'all know Lily from SWV. She took to Twitter to say it wasn't true. Candy Burris also went on social media and said it wasn't true. So now there's a teaser out that indicates that there may well be another season. You heard right. You heard right. There's now a teaser. So now I'm looking at. I'm looking at the fact that. Um, why did they lie? Because that literally put the Jasmine brand in a position where if I'm being honest, I did not trust your exclusives like after that i don't trust your exclusives not for um lily saying it wasn't true and and not only saying that it wasn't true she said get your news from reputable sources okay so, so j i is saying that's my dog jerry i 
he says they going on tour together is not for a show okay well that would be great that would be great but it looked like the mona scott young was on there so let's see let's see let's pull up what's going on let's see if we can pull up what's going on y'all i'm gonna try to share the screen Here we go. Hey, Nisa Michelle. Yeah, Tasha is no longer in the group, remember? Kenya 330, thank you for being 140. So this, the, the, this um, clip that I'm about to, that we're about to watch together is what had everybody buzzing. This is what had everybody buzzing. Turn the sound up on y'all screen because I don't know how much sound we're going to get from this, but let's go. Friendship is communication. Escape, are you ready to communicate? And what about you? SWV? No, nothing. Okay, I think we've made some good progress here. Have we? I think we can all agree we're ready for the next step. Uh oh, what's your next step? Well, I'm glad you asked. The mo okay, so this is what's going on, and they're like, what's the next step? I think they're teasing something or whatever. J.I. is saying they're teasing a tour and not a show. I would actually be very happy if this was a tour situation and not a show. Um, say the Jasmine brand posted they're going on tour. I think Mona manages the tour since Latasha husband gone. Um, but it, it just it just seems a little odd to have somebody who's a reality TV producer producing a tour. Why would you do that unless it's also going to be a show? I'm just asking. I'm just asking. I'm only asking. It's a lot of stuff. I told y'all this season of Negro is off the is off the chain. And you're right. Jasmine Brand is reporting that they're going on tour together. More details coming. So I don't know what's true. I do know that um them going on tour does not mean it's not a show. I think they're more than likely this is just me using my brain it doesn't mean i'm right this is not an exclusive like people love to call something an exclusive but i'm going to say this i do believe that this is still going to be a show i think that um they're gonna end up making it a show about them being on tour i just don't believe that they're just gonna go on tour and you're using Mona Scott Young to manage or tease your tour, it's given they're going to make it into a TV show. So it may not be like a, a sequel to what we saw, that debacle that we watched two years ago. But I think they're about to give us something on television. I don't know whether it's going to be good or not. I'm open to it. I'm just not looking forward to it. To be honest.
but I'm open to it. Mona may be reviving her music industry roots. Remember, she used to manage Buster and the whole Violator label. Yeah, but mm -mm. I don't know whether she did or she didn't. I don't. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. But that's it. That's all. Um, there's other gossip that's going on. I will keep my eye on everything. Some of you have let me know that you're all off all day so if the gossip gets too out of control and something else happens then we will indeed come back you know i'm not above it um mm. Yeah, I think I think today may be a gossip heavy day. I don't know why y'all, but I got that feeling. So just be on the lookout. If I have to come back, I will post it on the community tab Discord. Um, if you're on the text notification squad, you'll get your text notifications and whatever. Um, we're gonna do our best. That's all I can say. I'm gonna do my best to keep up with the gossip. Moonchild712 said Ashley is a friggin' bum. I can't stand her. She's been jealous of Candace since day one. Well, all right, girl, tell us how you really feel, okay? So listen, I'm going to hop off for now. Y'all enjoy the rest of your day. Happy Monday. Be energetic. Be positive. Be encouraged. Encourage somebody else. Be productive, okay? Do y'all things. Drink your water. Smile. Put a smile on someone else's face. And I will be back as soon as some more stuff jump off, and I can't hold my mouth closed, okay? So you know what it what the time it is, I'm going to ask you if you did not hit the like button on the way in, make sure you hit the like button on the way out. Um, hit your notification bell. Make sure you click all so you will know every time we go live on this channel. Subscribe if you're not subscribed because we're always happy to have you here. And if you want to join channel membership and put on your crown and, and be a part of the royal family, make sure that you hit the join button beneath the video or the membership link in the description box. Also in the description box is the link for our Royal Family Merchandise Store so you can get your crown gear so you can represent in our classic black and gold design or our new emerald crown design. We've also got the link to our Amazon storefront so we can all shop together and my Amazon wish list in case you want to send me snacks or a pack of pens and some notebooks so I can continue to take notes and bring y'all this gossip, okay? So we'll talk again soon. My peanut has showed up. Thank you for being like number 148. And listen, Bianca the Beautiful is letting y'all know that we appreciate y'all for being here. We appreciate the love. And remember, if no one else says it to you, God loves you. I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. We'll talk soon, okay? Bye.